20 years ago, I got dealt a dysfunctional card. My little brother became a heroin addict and my father became an alcoholic. What do I do? Do I sit there and join my little brother? Or do I become an alcoholic alongside my father? No. I got off my ass. I stopped for feeling sorry for myself. And I got on with it. Put my head down, learned a craft. And that's the journey I'm hoping that we're going to go on. My first passion uh, before food was, uh, was football. But I was always uh, a good eater, great lover of food. And I grew up uh, partly in Scotland, partly down south. So we had that sort of token of appreciation of home cooked food. Um, then I was very lucky to get on a foundation course, spending the last year of my school at a foundation course, uh, studying maths, English two and a half days a week, and then learning to cook for two and a half days a week. And it was a sort of new experiment. Now we had trouble uh, with buying my first set of whites and chef knives, and we depended on the Banbury round table to come up with something like 85, 90 pounds that mum and dad didn't have to get my first set of whites. So um, I still remember that day now uh, and how ecstatic and happy I was when I got given my first set of whites, my knives, and all of a sudden I wanted to go on that mission. Football was a sort of uh, huge burning ambition. I had a horrific injury where I smashed my cartilage and, and then all of a sudden, you know, what do you do? You sit there and get bitter. But I had this little burning desire of this sort of uh, chef, um, this, this, this ambition. And then I sort of channeled that frustration from football into cooking in, in a way that I, I just, I just wanted to learn. Um, the foundation course was huge. Did a sitting guild 706. Um, I was a mature uh, part-time student and mum and dad didn't have the money to send me to college full-time. So um, it, was, it was hard, but what I did do is take a job in the industry. I worked six days a week and went to college one day a week. So then everything started becoming clearer. Got my qualifications, the basic, and then went to London. And that's where it really just you know, took off. From the age of 16 to sort of 29, 30 is 14 years of a sponge. You're absorbing knowledge. Don't take a job for the sake of money. Don't worry about earning 500 pound a month or a year more somewhere else. Go and get knowledge, because that becomes a bigger passport for everything. The money will come once you've mastered your craft and you become incredibly talented. Find a different level of comfort. When things get too comfortable and you're still living with your parents and you've still got your first job and you don't want to move out because everything's too comfortable, get out. Put yourself in a strange situation in the middle of Barcelona. Put yourself in the middle of Paris, put yourself in the middle of Belgium and see what's available. Anybody can buy a restaurant. Um, and I want to get back to that dinner party where, you know, Marjorie and Philip are sat having dinner and the neighbours say, food's fucking amazing, you should open a restaurant. And they fall in love with the idea as opposed to the passion of what it takes on a daily basis. Restaurants are business uh, and it's, it's tough businesses. So um, you need to be passionate on a daily basis, not just when you feel like it. So Kitchen Nightmares was the sort of first big insight to, I suppose, refixing and repositioning um, businesses. Businesses get lazy and I think like a, a, a viewer, you know, customers vote with their feet, uh, like a viewer votes with their control and sure. so if it's not good enough, uh, they're going to switch or walk. You know, I'm, I multitask um, and so I think, you know, you could be the best chef in the world but if you've got a, a bad business behind that then you look, you know, the most stupid. So the more success you have, the more wrapped up in cotton wool you get and so I'm the opposite. You know, I, 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 I need to be at that cold face. I need to be you know, where the heartbeat is and I need to be in that level of uh, trepidation. And I also need to be under pressure. I think pressure's healthy. And unfortunately, you, you start getting judged by individuals who know less about food than you do. And so everybody's a critic. So you just, you, you get thick skinned um, and you, you learn to take those blows. Um, is it significant damaging to the business? If you're doing it wrong, yes it is. If you're not, then you have to accept that and just move on. So, you know, it's important to stay on top and not ignore uh, those issues. If they're fundamental and it's consistent with six or seven customers saying the same thing or six and seven viewers complaining about the same issue uh, on that program, then you move quickly. All I say to, to, to my kids, I started at the age of five, sat them down, look at me. The earlier you tell me, the more I can help. They look at me like I'm some weirdo and all of a sudden they get it. 15 years of age, Megan, our eldest daughter, came up and said, Dad, I really understand what you said to me five years ago. The earlier you, you share it, the more I can do. And it's exactly with those young kids today. What's the solution? How do we get out of this? And let's turn that negative into something positive and you're going to have some fun with it. So, you know, yes, it's hard. 
you know, not crushing their dreams because to be success is not about just winning. So you don't, you're not a failure if you get into the top 10 and it's like giving them that kind of confidence that you got into the top 20, you know, top 15, top 10, top five, you are bloody good, remember that. And um, get hungry, find that passion in life because once that light bulb, you know, flickers and you find out that's what you want to do, that's your calling, it's an amazing journey.